All righty. All right, I'm ready. Whenever you're of ready. Of course, I'm ready. Cheers. Cheers. Salutations, Brian. Salutations, Drew. How are you? I like your sweater, man. Thanks. It looks really good. It does. I almost wore, almost wore a holiday sweater. Oh, we don't today. want to overload. I mean, That's it's still, I thought. It's I was, still November. I, like, I didn't know what you were gonna wear. It hasn't even happened yet. See, there you Respect go. The holiday. There you go. For the purists, I opted to go Henley instead of no, no, no. sweater. Very Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I celebrated Thanksgiving this weekend, actually. Ah, Rachel's family. So you so started decorating then. We did. We're there actually going to be in town and like no crazy family stuff for Thanksgiving. What? For the actual Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, it's like gosh. the first time in 15 years, 20 Breaking years, rules. maybe. It's crazy. So, hey, welcome to Right Now. We're doing this. <laughs> we have a topic. Uh, we do, we do, we do. But uh, semi-related, congrats on the nine years. Thanks, man. At, at the Goulet Pen Company. Yeah. It's pretty well, cool. Yeah, almost a decade. Yes. Technically, like, you have been working on pens for a decade, but... Over a decade. Yes. Yeah, so, but, like, not including kind of the woodworking chapter. You're, yeah. you're, you're counting, you count uh, the really nine count. years as, like, when you received that. your first shipment of fountain pen-related stuff. That was a, the first day that we listed fountain pen products online and yeah. started selling them. How's it feel? It feels, uh, you know, about, like... Eight years and 364 days. Ooh. <laughs> you know? It's just another day. But no, it's pretty cool, you know. But I've never been huge into, like, birthdays and milestones. That's and still worth like mentioning. That. So, I mean, we've been so busy around here. We have. And, like, you normally organize a scavenger hunt. And, like, everyone around here, it just, like, completely snuck up on us. And yeah. we're like, oh, crap. Usually people, start, ask here. Yeah, usually people <laughs> start asking me about that in, like, July. Like, hey, we're doing yeah. a scavenger hunt this year. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Slept. It was literally like five o'clock on Saturday, and I was with Rachel's parents, and I was like, "Oh crap! I didn't like do an Instagram post or like anything." So I was like, "Let me find some old pictures and just throw it up on on my Instagram." Like this, so there's something that marks this day. Yeah, it's been exciting it's around here for sure. Yeah. One thing that I had a really awesome opportunity to do, and is what we're going to talk about today, yes. is go for a really awesome training seminar at Disney World. Yes. So I a got legitimate training a legitimate training seminar, not yeah. just like a right. I'm gonna go to Disney World for. I already reasons. did that. I already did that this year another time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I took a one day course on Disney's approach to quality service. Since I'm the customer care manager here, we thought that it might be worth it for me to get some perspective on how Disney does things. Because if you've ever interacted with anyone that works for them, they have it more or less figured out. They do it pretty well. They're not bad at it. Yeah. So they're, they're sort of known for their service. Yeah. So I did that, and cool. Brian thought maybe we should talk about it. So we're gonna do. Well, you that. were telling me about it. And I mean, it sounded I, so compelling. I, I was can, like, we should share this with the people. Yeah, I can talk about it for days. I loved it. I thought it really made a big impact on me. I think I'm gonna be able to bring a lot of stuff back for our team, and obviously it got some wheels turning, which yeah. is always fun to do. That's right. One thing that the biggest takeaway I think I had was more or less how important it is to rupture stereotypes. And that's what that's the term that they use at Disney, rupturing stereotypes. That's more mm -hmm. or less how Disneyland got created was Walt Disney was at a carnival with his like granddaughter or somebody and just kind of looked around, noticed it was kind of creepy. It was not clean, yeah. not safe. The cast or you know uh, people that worked there weren't very friendly. The carnies. Yeah, and it was always moving. There were there was no stationary theme park at that time. So he's like, okay, well, what can I do about this? And one term we use a lot around here is the term QBQ, which was a uh, book that Brian first uh, mentioned to our team. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, by John G. Miller. Mm -hmm. it's a fantastic book. It's all about personal accountability and basically like not blaming or making excuses when things aren't going the way that you like. But instead asking yourself, yourself. what can I do about that? And that's mm -hmm. what he did. He looked at this and said, okay, well, what can I do here? And he said, I'm gonna build a park. It's gonna stay in the same place. It's gonna have super friendly people it's gonna be super clean and it's gonna be super safe. And everybody was like, what? No, that's not a thing. That can't Walt, be done. No. Yeah, that's crazy, crazy man. Right, and it, it was not easy, but he did it. And I, I keep that in mind a lot because when you first kind of started doing your thing, mm. online fountain pen retail, there were definitely some stereotypes that you had to think about. Oh yeah. It wasn't super, like the online shopping aspect isn't a, like you don't immediately go to an online store and say, ooh, this is gonna be super personal and friendly. Yeah. Especially so, with tangible products like this. That's another thing is people yeah. couldn't see the products. They can't touch oh, them. Yeah. Why are they going to buy a pen that they can't touch? Well, we weren't even like the industry leaders, you know, it was like, you know, Zappos and others like that. They led the way with like wearables, you know, like shoes or clothing or whatever. And people were like, 
people never buy clothes online. You have to try them on in the store. It's like, well, clearly people are buying this stuff online. It was kind of the same with pens, like especially with um, suppliers, manufacturers. They were like, who's going to buy a pen online? That's crazy. You have to see it in person. There was a lot of that. And so all of the online pen stuff back then, pretty much, I mean, there were some, some, some of those who were kind of figuring it out, but um, a lot of it was discounting. Mm -hmm. So it was like, people won't pay as much because they can't see it, so therefore we have to discount. It just became who can discount it the mm -hmm. most. And that, and that got a reputation early in the pen industry for online pen retail is just discounters, mm -hmm. and that's it. And so service and everything, education, knowledge of products, all that was not even a factor. But then you realize that, well, let me, how can I do my part to make sure that these, you know, people, people that are interested in the pens have as robust a picture as they can possibly get uh -huh. of these products using, you know, pretty darn good photography, mm -hmm. you know, shooting videos, producing all this content that was, That's again, not at the time the standard for online sure. pen retail. Well, and we started out, we didn't even do pens. It was paper and ink. Right. For the first year. And you did videos on those. On video on paper and ink, because that's yeah. what we had, and that's what we could afford. So now how, how many seals can I get out of this, you know, yeah. wa wax Nobody seal. was doing videos <laughs> about paper and ink and wax seals right. at that time. Yeah. So there, you, there, was a, there was an aspect of rupturing stereotypes there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's fantastic, and that's something we're going to continue to strive to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys see any, if you, if there's a online retail stereotype that you have a, you know, always take issue with, like, oh man, that's one thing I don't like. Let us know. I'm always trying to work on that. Mm -hmm. We always want to be aware of that sort of stuff, and you know, see what we can do to destroy it. Yeah. Uh, one other cool thing that Walt Disney did was when they first um, built, I don't know if it was Disneyland or Disney World, but I think it might have been World, but the unclean aspect he opened the parks mm. and handed everybody at the entrance on the first day little you know caramel candies or Werther's original or something and he would follow the people and wait and see how long they would hold on to this wrapper before just kind of tossing it aside mm. and he's like okay the average is 24 feet let's put trash cans at 20 and like he, there was that level of intentionality behind mm. how he did everything. And that's another theme was that Disney is intentional about everything. And in the training, they encouraged us to always try to be intentional where others might be unintentional. Sure. And assume that somebody is going to notice everything. The door hardware, the trash cans, everything needs to be themed because most people probably won't care or notice, but the person that does notice is going to be blown away by that. Mm -hmm. And one thing I did was come back, I'm like, oh my gosh, well, what's one thing that I'm not noticing? And I immediately thought of our on hold music because mm -hmm. it's not, I mean, it's on hold music. It's not going <laughs> to ever blow you away, but... I'm like, well, why? I don't pay any attention to that. Let me go and, and I'll listen to it. It's I'm something like, oh. we set up years ago. Yeah, I'm like, and and we don't listen to it, it was, so we never think It was it. terrible, Brian. It, it was, was pretty bad. It was bad. It so was I'm like, all right, bad. let me let me do something about this. So I talked to Andy. I was like, hey, can you download Bright, Bright Sunshine for me? So I, you know, <laughs> she downloaded this song called Bright, Bright Sunshine. <laughs> and it's chipper. It's upbeat. Got a nice little acoustic going on. Nice. I'm like, all right, this is better. <laughs> and granted, most people probably won't notice. We don't put people on hold very often. But for if you're somebody who notices that, then... <laughs> That Yay. one's for you. <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> but hey, you know, it's being intentional. It's paying attention to the little things because yeah. the little things make up the big thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, I've, As I've always said, my, my dad actually told me, passed down from his father, uh, retail is detail. Mm -hmm. And so we try to take care of all those little details because that stuff matters. Right. Yeah. Another big thing was making emotional connections, which is another stereotype of online business. Mm -hmm. You don't go into you know, an online store expecting to make an emotional connection yeah. when you're just clicking checkout. Yeah. But that's why we have live chat, that's why we have pictures of all of our uh, team members on yeah. our website, and that's why business being personal is such a repeated phrase around here. It's part yeah. of our mission. Yeah. And all of my team members have the ability to shoot videos and send them to you via email or live chat or, you know, whatever, in order to show you something a little bit more specific to your needs. So I want to make sure that that's happening so that, yeah. you know, you might be surprised to see a video of the person you're actually speaking with. And in fact, all of our team members uh, on the customer care department have a get to know me video in their signature as well. Yeah. So that's one thing that you don't have with us is yeah. the anonymity of who you're speaking with. And that was definitely a stereotype that we sought to break down when we first started because especially in like 2009, people would put up websites and they tried to like pretend that they were bigger than who they actually were. So like you would be some, just one person, like kind of like we were, just like running it out of their house or out of their apartment or whatever. And everything plastered on their website would be like, 
we this and you know the company and da 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 and I'm like you're like one person in your house the like royal why are we. you trying to pretend like you're a big corporation like be who you are and so Rachel and I did the complete opposite hey it's and we us were, like <laughs> shooting like live video with our baby like dirty laundry piled up for days he's not exaggerating and you can still see all those old videos <laughs> yeah. and it's like that's what we were at that time and now like we shoot today kind of similar it's like this is who we are and this yeah is you know do. what's up yeah and like that authentic kind of look into our world that was pretty atypical especially for that time you see a little more of that now because you know authenticity is a buzzword that's thrown around in social media but that's uh with the right intention yeah that's absolutely a stereotype that we tried to bust with the online thing right and a lot of and one other really cool thing that they covered at disney was Service recovery, which is their version mm -hmm. of saying, hey, when something goes wrong, own it and take care of your customer. Ooh, I like they, that term. Yeah, I love it. I really mm -hmm. do. Because it's not like, you know, you're, you're not talking about appeasing the customer, giving what they want, or defending your actions. It's just, yeah. hey, Customer satisfaction. It's, yeah, it's not satisfaction. Yeah. And in fact, they said, that they explicitly, they didn't say that it's not satisfaction, but you don't want to just fix the problem. You want mm. to rec you want to have a reconciliation of the relationship. Yeah. And I love that too because yeah. if you just fix the problem, you're like, okay, well there you go. This this thing is now not broken, but do I feel better as a customer? Am I going to come back? Yeah. And that's what we're going to try to focus on. It's not just all right, here's your issue, we fixed it, but like let's really repair what you and I have going on here. That's cool. And like really look at it like relationships because that's what yeah. keeps people coming back. Because like you said, they, they know what we're about, they see us, they know what we're doing, yeah. and we want to make sure that that continues to happen. We want that transparency. Especially in the pen world, it's really a lot about relationships. Absolutely. You know, and we try to build that. So uh, if you have any feedback for us about our customer service or anything that we could be doing better, obviously we look to companies who are benchmarking like Disney for uh, you know good examples of what we can kind of live up to. But if you have any other experiences too, we would love to hear about them, especially if they're like online retail or anything like that. If you're like, oh man, the way that this other company ships or the way that they handle this return or the way that da 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 da, we would love to get those little nuggets because oh, yeah. we really take that stuff in and, and want to make the experience better. So. Thank you, Drew, for being on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing your Disney experience. It was fantastic. That's awesome. And everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic Monday. And right on. Yes.